Um, I wish to thank you very much for being with us for this online presentation of uh, the leading Catholic University program for Asia. Uh, my name is Loic Quash. I am the head of um, the training department of IFCO, and um, I wish to um, give a little bit of information around the context of uh, this program. IFCO, since 10 years now, is um, um, proposing programs in leadership, and uh, we have been uh, used to propose this program in the three languages of the Federation that are French, English, and Spanish. This uh, program is uh, made for Asia and uh, as um, um, regional activities of IFCO since uh, uh, three years, we are thinking about going in the region in order to propose some activities and uh, some of our programs. So leadership program uh, has been made with um, uh, our colleagues uh, of the academic team, John Davis, David Locke, and Stephen Morgan. Uh, since um, now 10 years, we are used to propose this program in Rome each year. We are proposing a program also in French uh, that is uh, being done in, uh, in Rome also. And um, we are organizing a Latin American program that, is, that will be organized in June uh, next uh, this year in the uh, Dominican Republic. So... It was just um, a brief introduction, and um, I wish to, to say that uh, this program is focused on the uh, institution itself, or your, your institutions, and uh, is made upon your cases and uh, your issues. Uh, I let uh, John now the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, good morning, colleagues, or good evening, I think is probably more, more appropriate, uh, uh, given the fact that we're at different parts of the world. Um, it's very nice to uh, have the chance to uh, meet you and to uh, explain something about what the programme uh, is all about. Uh, we'd be very interested in any questions, any feedback, any comments which you have on the design uh, of the program because we want to make this very uh, relevant to uh, the needs uh, which you have as senior people in universities and of course we would very much like to encourage your participation in the program as uh, as uh, full members as well that would be a great delight uh, for us and uh, uh, over the various years we've made great friends with our participants on the program and we've kept together uh, with them over a long period of time so uh, we very much envisage the program as as having a, um, the possibilities of long-term friendships and relationships with the team and uh, the participants but also I think among the participants as well and uh, David will say a little bit about that later on. Uh, now, as far as our agenda is concerned, they, these, these are the, uh, the rough uh, framework which we'll use. Uh, first of all, we'll ask ourselves, well, well, why is this program needed anyway? Why is it needed anyway? Why have it? Then the second thing which we'd like to do is to say, well, okay, uh, having said that, what's the nature of the program? What's the broad structure of the program? What are the themes which we'll be addressing and so on. The third is a very valid question, uh, which is how do we contextualize a program in an Asian uh, Roman Catholic higher education setting? Um, the programs we've run so far have been very much global in nature with participants from all the uh, continents, which has been very good. Uh, but since we are having participants for this program uh, solely from the Asian region, then, of course, it becomes important that we um, demonstrate to you that it is uh, very much aimed at uh, the Asian issues in higher education. <clears throat> Uh, the fourth thing then, I think, is to say a little bit about what sort of learning experience we do use on the programme, because it's quite distinctive. It's not a, um, a, a programme where we sit you down in a room and talk at you for a week. It's very interactive. Uh, it uh, uh, asks for, I think, a lot of participation by yourselves as active uh, learners. And um, David will say a bit about that later on. And then finally, I think we need to ask ourselves, well, if we've been running the programme for 10 years, what sort of impact 
as it actually made? Uh, does it make a difference? And I think this is the really point about this programme. We really aim to make a difference. So that's the, the rough structure, I think, of our work together uh, today. Um, and um, we've already mentioned, I think, who the uh, people around this uh, table are, um, uh, which is uh, Loic, myself, David and Stephen. Uh, the gentleman in white on the right hand side is not a member of the academic team. It will be rather nice to have him as a member of the academic team, but I think we missed the boat on that one uh, now. Um, but um, we have uh, met, met him in uh, one of the previous programmes, which is a great great joy and a great delight for us. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's ask ourselves the question then, why is the programme needed generally and in the context of Asian universities? And um, the, the, the reason I think is very much about um, recognising that uh, our universities are in the middle of a, a great number of different problems, different challenges. Um, and it may very well be that uh, those of us who get um, uh, nominated or elected as leaders of institutions at various levels uh, are not necessarily altogether prepared for some of the problems which we've got to deal with, um, either in terms of the content of the problems or indeed in terms of our way of going about managing the institution as well. So the first thing I think which we, we, we ought to say is that the programme is very much has arisen because of these series of significant issues, current issues and future issues as well, for which you as leaders have got the obligation of developing relevant strategies and relevant approaches. Now, I won't go into these in, in a huge amount of detail, but um, of, of the ones which we've been working at with your uh, predecessors uh, on the programme over the past 10 years, these um, come out as being regular issues. No matter what part of the world we're in, these are the sort of issues which do come out. Uh, the first, if you like, is that we're often, of course, as universities, uh, Catholic universities, based in secular societies. And there are all sorts of issues, of course, and problems uh, associated with that. Not the less, at least of which, of course, is our identity, our distinctive purpose. So we spend a bit of time talking through that with you. The second thing, of course, is that we have got ambiguous relations with government agencies as well, in terms of uh, our recognition, uh, how they finance us or not, as the case may be. We are subject to quality assurance arrangements and various other things like that. So, uh, and of course, in some uh, governments, obviously things are not very uh, convivial, not very congenial. And this is something we've got to take account of. We've now got, of course, a great variety of different types of stakeholders, uh, users of our services who make different demands. It's not just students these days, um, it's uh, uh, non-traditional students, lifelong learning students, um, it's users of our research, users of our academic expertise as advisors and various other things of this type. And this we want to spend quite a bit of time talking through uh, with you. Then we've got the variability, of course, in student enrollment patterns. Some of you are in expanding situation uh, and are quite large. Some of you uh, are in a declining situation in terms of student numbers. And there are obviously uh, quite a, a significant amount of issues uh, associated with which particular category you happen to be in. So uh, arising from that then, it seems evident that most of us are facing challenges of competition. We face in big challenges of financial, academic and academic sustainability over a long period. Um, and uh, this has grown, I think, as an issue which we've been dealing with with the programme over the years. We've also got a whole lot of societal challenges demanding our attention, climate change, COVID, social deprivation, ethical behaviours of uh, the, uh, uh, the sort of business community, government and various other things like that. We're often quite small. So there's the question, of course, of are we big enough? How do we access a wider range of academic expertise. 
And uh, in, in some cases, institutions do tend to have some shortcomings in traditions of professional leadership and have internal cultures which are not really very interested in moving the institution to uh, different places and going outside the comfort zone. So that's something I think which we do want to spend a bit of time talking about. Uh, so the point, of course, is that uh, we ha have found certainly that um, leaders of institutions uh, <clears throat> uh, have got problems and the function of this particular uh, program is to assist um, uh, our participants to uh, work uh, uh, positively in relation to some of these challenges. So in the light, light of that, simply, I think our function is therefore to take uh, uh, senior people in institutions or from uh, higher education agencies and help them to better understand the complexity of the issues and the opportunities which the issues offer, because lots of problems obviously are uh, opportunities to move the institution in a different direction. We want to help you develop approaches to facilitate the sustainability and health of the institution, and also to strengthen the capacity of institutions generally to play a more valuable role in the contemporary world. And this, of course, is, 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 is not uh, just institutions on their own, it's institutions acting in alliances with other universities as well. So that, that basically, I think, is what we are trying to do in broad overall terms. It's a problem-centered program, and we are concerned with helping you with these. <clears throat> so if we could go on to the next one, David, and um, hand over to, um, <clears throat> uh, to our friend, Stephen. You're muted, Stephen. You're muted, Stephen. I have this wonderful capacity for shutting myself up and then talking, which is extraordinary. <laughs> um, uh, thank you. Thank you, John. I, the first thing I want to say, actually, before I get into this, is that I'm a graduate of this program. Four years ago, I did this program in Rome, uh, about six months before um, I was s selected to lead the University of St. Joseph here in Macau. And immediately before, of course, the challenges that came with COVID, uh, quite extraordinary challenges for all of us. And I would say that uh, I'm deeply grateful to um, uh, to IFCU uh, for the opportunity of having done the, uh, the, the leadership course in 2019. Uh, I use some of the skills, some of the approaches, and uh, certainly some of the, um, uh, if you like, the kind of mental predispositions that I developed during that course uh, on a daily basis. So in terms of, if you like, um, return on investment, it's been, for me, I think one of the most uh, high returns on investment of, of courses that I've ever done. Now, um, that said, uh, you need to know a little bit more about uh, what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And John has already said that um, we, we're, we're, we're dealing with a question of, of uh, of context and one of the things that we need to have clear in our minds before we begin this course in April is the character of the principal problems and cha challenges facing Catholic higher, higher education institutions in Asia uh, which participants feel the program should address. Um, very often the participants in these programs are, 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 are experts themselves in the problems and challenges that they face and so um uh, 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 we we need to be in listening mode in order to ensure that the way in which we deliver the course answers those answers those problems so we'd be very welcome to uh to to have feedback now or in 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 uh, in uh, some later point on precisely those the issues that you think are facing you and of course um, we all know those of us in Asia that referring to Asia as if it's a homogenous whole uh, is something of a challenge um, if we're talking about universe Catholic universities in the uh, in the area covered by Asia we're talking about really diverse cultures we're talking about very very diverse uh, contexts 
from, for example, a majority Catholic country like the Philippines. Um, although, again, of course, um, that masks vast regional differences. Life in Mindanao is very different from uh, life in, in Luzon. Um, uh, and that in itself is different from life here in China or in Korea or in, in Indonesia. So it's important for us to have an opportunity to identify before the pro before we deliver the program the particular cha challenges that that uh, Asian universities, despite that vast range of context, requires. And one of the reasons that that's important is a, a central part of the way in which the program uh, is delivered, which David is now going to talk about. Okay. Um... Oh, it's, sorry, it's John, not David. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, to reiterate what Stephen said, I think um, certainly we'd like you to tell us, uh, you know, towards the end of the of our meeting here, what are the big problems which do confront you? Because I think that's really pretty important for us. Okay. Now, having, having said, said that, um, uh, there are, if you go to the next one, David. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, there are various um, uh, strands of the program, uh, as uh, you'll see when you get the timetable uh, for it. Um, the first thing I think we want to spend quite a bit of time talking about is the context of Catholic universities in Asia. And uh, we'll find out about this from questionnaires, which we'll send you in uh, in advance of the program. We have found out about it, I think, because uh, uh, the other day, yesterday, yesterday or the day before, we had a, a meeting of rectors of Asian universities who provided us with a lot of very good uh, ideas as to what the particular problems were from their uh, point of view. So I think that's something which we really need to talk through with you on the program. And that'll infuse, I think, uh, the rest of our discussions in a big way. The second main theme, I think, which we're concerned with is strategic development. How do universities move themselves from one place to another? How do we conceive of strategies? Um, what are the component parts of strategies? <clears throat> um, and this is obviously will include education, research, um, <clears throat> uh, so-called um, third mission activities and so forth. How do we actually go about it? And more important, how do we actually make the strategic plan work? <clears throat> the third thing I think, which is very significant, of course, is Catholic identity and what the distinctive contribution of Catholic universities is to their local community, region, and internationally as well. And, and this, of course, applies both internal to the institution, but also the external identity as well. Uh, and, and this raises questions of values and um, and culture and so on and so forth. Um, the, the 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 context I think is important because uh, here, of course, we will certainly be talking um, uh, about what's going on in the big wide world of higher education and how this is affecting us as Catholic. Uh, universities. Um, and we certainly get involved there in a lot of issues, for example, um, like all of the international developments in quality assurance. Um, uh, we know there's a lot going on in terms of securing financial sustainability of institutions. So how can we learn from the broader uh, global experience as far as this is concerned? Um, and so on and so forth. Um, we very much therefore concerned with the role of the rector and senior leadership in effective institutional change. And this enables us, I think, to look at particular dimensions uh, of how institutions might want to change. So we've got um, uh, sessions, for example, looking at research, um, looking at the uh, evolution of the educational program and teaching and learning. Um, we've got knowledge exchange and research and development the role of the university in terms of its social responsibilities and regional development. Um, we've clearly got to mention things like governance and management and so forth, which is very particular, of course, to the individual case. Um, and also, of course, long term, the sustainability 
of institutions uh, as well. Um, and these are uh, very, very um, uh, important, uh, of course. Uh, and uh, as, as you will see when you get, get to look at the program, um, the, the whole week um, uh, is infused you know, by a consideration of all these uh, items. Um, based as they are on where you happen to be at the moment and taking it from there, putting it in a broader context, seeing whether we can learn from international experience um, and ourselves and um, uh, uh, enabling you at the very end, I think, to uh, have an action plan. Uh, but David uh, will now look at this because one of the uh, principal elements in the programme is what we call the SWATs, um, uh, where we uh, set up a number of groups, SWAT being strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of the various institutions, and he will tell us how we uh, manage this particular process. Thank you very much, John, and good evening, colleagues. The SWAT groups are, in a way, the spine of the programme. The agendas of them are determined by the members of each group, and each group has between four and six people in it. And they bring to the programme a particular strategic issue, more than one, if you wish, um, which they are grappling with at the moment, or they think they will be grappling with in the future. And we use an action learning methodology. Each member of the group has a session which is entirely devoted to their issue. Everybody would have read about it beforehand. During the session, you explain briefly the issues which you are dealing with where you see it. And then the rest of the session is focused on helping you, helping you to understand the, the, the issues that you're dealing with it, perhaps some suggesting some approaches that have been useful elsewhere. Because although you have a very eminent academic team with you today, by far the bulk of the experience will be within the membership of the group. And what the SWAT groups do is to enable that to be brought to the fore. Now it is confidential. It's confidential to the members of that SWAT group. What you end up with from the week's programme is an action plan. But the programme doesn't stop when you fly back from Jakarta. The, a member of the programme team will be working with each group and that person will be very happy to remain in contact. So if you go back and you are trying to implement something and you come across issues, you can contact them. It's a sort of after sales service in inverted commas. And we have, I'm going to jump ahead now, but um, we have through the years that we've been doing this programme, seen the most amazing transformations, whether it is the establishment of a new university, the development of a new campus and the integration of that campus, the establishment of a new department, um, a completely Reor or complete reorientation of the way a university deals with its external stakeholders. And it started on this program. And the leaders of this program helped to carry it forward. And when Stephen uh, early on talked about a return on investment from this program, we potentially this process is, is huge. And uh, I'll be very happy a little bit later on to take any questions about how we do it and why it works. David, it's very interesting that you should talk about that follow-up and people keeping in touch. Three of the members of the SWAP group from, from my uh, participation in the course are still in regular close contact with one another. 
Um, in fact, I was speaking to one of the other participants in my swap group the other day, talking about precisely the resolution of the strategic issue that he brought to our, our SWAT group uh, all those, all those uh, moons ago, so to speak. Now, I, I've, I've talked very briefly earlier about context, and we need to explain how we're going to con contextualize the program, given that we're all in contexts that can be defined by culture, finance, politics, geography, a whole range of those things and they're all going to be uh, they're all going to be uh, influential on uh, how we learn to lead how we learn to be leaders of universities and so the primary tool uh, david if you could move to the next slide that would be great the the primary tool in advance of the program uh, to contextualize um, uh, the the program and to tailor make it, if you like, uh, to, 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 to meet the Asian context will be the preliminary questionnaires. These are really very important. Participants need to take a great deal of time uh, and care over their completion of the preliminary questionnaires because they're crucial to the effectiveness of the program. Uh, they fall into four areas. Um, as you see on the slide, I don't need to read you what's on the slide, but these these areas enable the, 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 the core team to have a sense of where you are all coming from, for us to understand your university, uh, in order that not just the broad culture, but actually the specific situation of your university is, uh, is, is identified uh, and understood as well as can be uh, uh, as well as can be the case before we begin. Of course, inevitably the learning starts really the day you arrive and we start talking about these things. But the preliminary question is they're absolutely central to the effectiveness of this, I think. Now we'll then work on those issues and the information that you define um, because they will then feed into the sessions. David's already talked about how the SWOT sessions work. Uh, but the course has open box sessions where you can identify uh, questions or problems or issues that you that, that crop up or occur to you later in uh, later in the uh, in the process. Again, that needs to be contextualized. So back to those preliminary questionnaires being so important. Uh, David has also said something which is 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 absolutely important, and that is that actually. Um, whilst uh, David and John and I bring expertise, experience, um, some measure of intellectual critical thinking, the real experts uh, in your situation are, are you. Uh, and so the way in which the pedagogy works allows, allows you to be educated in the sense of uh, your knowledge and expertise drawn out of you uh, so that um, the, the, the problems that you bring, the opportunities that you bring, the challenges that you bring are dealt with in a manner that recognizes your experience and, and the fact that you may actually already know the answers to some of these problems. You just need to be facilitated. And so the, the approach that we, we use is essentially dialogical. There are sessions where, uh, where um, one or other of the core team will be the sage on the stage. But most of the time, and even in those sessions, most of the approach will be rather more dialogical than um, didactic. So we now um, move on, I think, to... Uh, this is to David now, isn't it? It is indeed. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. And let me take this um, just uh, a little bit further. How are we going to learn together? Well, Stephen has given you some broad indications of this. But the heart of what we do is obviously the Catholic identity. 
and how that gets translated into your university, its traditions, and, and so on. And um, that's why this program is unique in the Catholic context. And why we look at the Catholic experience. A few years ago, John and I were involved in an exercise looking at a number of Catholic universities, looking at the issues and uh, re reporting on them. And obviously we'll share some of that with you. But as Stephen has said, it's your own situations uh, which are important and each of your situations uh, is, is unique. So how are we going to do it? Well, as Stephen said, very interactive. Um, we will give you in advance of the program all of the presentations. So you can look through them beforehand. You can identify the particular bits that you are most interested in and would be most helpful to you. And we may go through the presentations. We, we may do it in a different way. It will be focused on the, the participants. Next, as has already been said, the SWATs are the backbone of the program and aspects of those SWATs will be picked up, um, not in the particulars of your own case, but in generality within the main program as a whole. Yes, we are interested in theory, and a lot of what we do is based on theory, but this is fundamentally an action oriented program. Uh, so intellectual discussions about particular concepts are likely to be few and far between, but there will be lots that is about action and plans that are being developed and so on. And also the word strategic, John has, has used that before. We're concerned with the future. Leaders should be concerned with the future. And that will be the orientation of the programme. The programme is very comparative. Um, the exercise which John and I did, the experience of running six of these programmes before, um, has given us quite a lot of, of information about what works and circumstances in which it works. I mean, we're not saying that's a perfect and complete answer because your situation is unique, but nevertheless, we will draw on that. And we recognize that people learn, even rectors learn in different ways. And we're going, to, there will be some lectures. We will bring in some guests. Um, we're talking at the moment about some people from the region uh, who may come in. We sometimes use case studies. Um, we draw heavily on the questionnaires. Um, and we build into each day um, a period of reflection when you can do what Stephen did when he came on the program, just sit down and what does this mean for me? And um, if there's anything that you want to follow up from that, you can do it. And the programme has quite a number of opportunities for informal networking. We do enjoy ourselves. There are some nice dinners. We meet some interesting people. Um, and those opportunities give an opportunity to uh, discuss further, ask more questions and so on. Throughout the programme, the academic team is available to meet you on a one-to-one -one basis. And as I've mentioned earlier on, there is um, a follow-up service that makes it sound very formal. Uh, in practice, it's very informal. Uh, it's a participant contacting whoever led uh, his or her SWAT group saying, look, I'm doing this, uh, could you help? And I've visited two of the universities that have been in previous SWAT groups that I've run. And actually, the greatest pleasure from being involved in this project is seeing what happens as a result, seeing how people are benefiting and talk to people and 
finding how, how we feel about that. So the programme is important, but the programme doesn't exist for itself. What is the evidence of the impact of it? Well, I think there are three categories. Firstly, there's us. The week will hopefully give you personal gains in the form of confidence to tackle situations, new insights, new skills, and it'll give you a group of friends who you can phone or email if you want to. And a lot of that happens. Secondly, your institution should benefit. Whatever project it is that you, you bring, then you should take back quite a lot that will help that. And, you know, if you want us to say more when we talk in questions and so on, very happy to do that. And the third contribution, which is why the association with IFQ was so important, is Catholic higher education globally. What you have is the largest higher education network in the world. And there are many ways in which the institutions in that could work more effectively together to give all of them greater impact in the way in which they develop that mission. It happens in many ways. We see internationalization, we see staff having secondments to different institutions. We see students traveling from one country to another. We see partnerships on particular projects. In one case, the establishment of a new university, the generosity of other universities on that particular program in helping them develop their curriculum and staffing and space issues it was really quite amazing. And it would have cost a huge amount of money to have bought that amount of consultancy in. And I would say they probably got better consultancy because of the people they were working with and their own experience. And I think all that adds up to your universities having greater impact in the world. And that's what motivates me um, to get involved in programs like this. So in summary, the whole program is focused on your university, developing you and your team. And we think that it's a relatively small investment for quite a big impact, both now, because you're all dealing with some immediate issues, and also in the future for your strategic issues. And as far as we know, there's nothing else like it in the world, which makes us pleased. But if others wanted to come in and do something like it, if it had good impact, then, you know, obviously that would be good for the system. But here we are. We have IFQ. Uh, we've had some great feedback on the, the programme that we've done. Um, and that's what we wanted to share with you this morning.